Hi, welcome back everyone. If you don't know me, my name is Newman and welcome to my life with plants. Today I'm going to be watering all of these orchids here. They're all Phalaenopsis. As you can see, some are in flower, like the Sakudan. Looks like it's the uh, famous Japanese uh, cherry blossoms. We've got some other varieties here. That'll be a different show when I show you all the flowers open, especially on the buds here. Products I use is uh, white vinegar to bring the acidity, the pH down to about 5.5. This is an all-purpose fertilizer that's 6, 6, 19. Green tea, tea bags, these are the big bottles I use to mix it all up. And I have a bottle over here ready to go. First I'm going to do a soaking with this uh, tap here in the sink. It's all ready to go so stay tuned. one I'm gonna water this is a rescue plant oh no it was actually given to me sorry um, it's taken uh, the last three years to get it back to health and even for it to get flower buds again I'm just gonna run this water all the way through till I rip the median it's just ordinary tap water I'm gonna make sure that it's Lukewarm. I don't take it out of the basket, I just soak everything and when I finish I will wrap a towel around the bottom to stop it dripping on the floor. It spends its life by a sun in a sunny window. About 30 centimeters or so back from the sunny window. Why we soak it like this is to get the medium well and truly wet because when you apply fertilizer and stuff like that, you want to make you make sure that you flush out. And keep the medium clean of excess salts and the second thing is when you do add fertilizer you don't want it to come in contact with the roots when it's dry because it can cause burning root burn this has been well soaked and next I apply this which has the little bit of vinegar in it um, the fertilizer and green tea what do I put green tea it carries trace element minerals such as iron calcium and some magnesium too so there we go Final watering is with the good stuff. This is going to go and hang up. Actually, a better method is to soak your orchids in water if you have time. When you do that, make sure that you get all the medium thoroughly soaked. I think I did a pretty good job. It was about a minute. Anyway, I'll be back. Here's the buds by the way. It's gonna have uh, pink, pink flowers. I'll be back in a minute. I'm just gonna go and hang this up to dry. Okay, up next is this uh, 
variegated. It's got a beautiful variegated leaf Phalaenopsis that I bought about a couple of months ago. It has a, actually it's got a new flower spike emerging right here. It's nice and dry, ready for uh, watering. And I gave it a repot too. No, actually it's got two, two new flower spikes. It's got a couple, it's got one here and one there. It's a bit soaked first. Since the medium is new, it takes a little bit to get the bark wet. And I use sphagnum moss around the top uh, because during those drier periods, which is winter over here, you tend to get your roots tend to go a little bit black that are on the surface. That's them drying out. It's not a fungus issue or anything, because when you touch them, they're quite firm. It's just that they're drying. During the summers here, it's very humid, so these roots will be will look clean, cleaner. You just can't get it perfect. You're always going to have some blemishes here and there. Okay, that's soaked. Next. Give it the, the good water. And that's it. I'll be careful that I don't tip it out of its pot as it's starting to root in there. There we have it. All done. Put it back into its uh, cash pot here. Another thing that you can do while you're watering is to go around and dust the leaves. I just got a uh, damp paper towel. What this does is it keeps the dust off because dust is, it's, it's, it creates such a barrier between the leaf and the light and ultimately, well, number one point that you wipe the dust off is that when the dust settles on the leaves it, uh, it cuts off um, their ability to breathe breathe through the stomata of the leaf it's choking them so you should wipe the dust off so that they can breathe better and you'll notice a big difference with the growth <clears throat> and do wipe your leaves of course I don't want to water into the crown because it can cause crown rot if they was, these were grown outdoors of course um, attach the trees they would be growing more naturally which is hanging to the side as you know which lets all the water run out of the crown anyway that one's done stay tuned for the next watering next is one of my favorites check that out for a bunch of blooms it's such a display and Beautiful smell. So floral. It's actually like opening up a very floral, rosy bar of soap. There's a rosy kind of fragrance. And opening it up and you have that smell, which is very, very nice. Such a healthy plant, all these leaves growing on it. It was repotted this uh, last year, last year. I think, yeah. When you do a repotting, you should be careful with the watering. You should give it a good soak and let it dry, 
dry out quite thoroughly before you water it again because um, the plant is trying to adjust itself to a new pot and excessive watering won't help. Um, sometimes you can get a bit of uh, root rot because you did a um, repotting. If you're worried about the, the roots getting black in there, while there are fresh new roots growing, you can use the hydrogen peroxide uh, mixed with water to get a, to get a good uh, recipe for that or the amount that you add to water you can look it up on the internet they'll give you the uh, the instructions there but uh, I tend to just use like a liter of water and I add, add a couple of tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide and when you water with that of course it'll it'll help to stop fungus in there growing and give the orchid a chance to grow well you can never avoid the odd root here and there that might die. That's just normal. I forgot to show you my paintbrush here. It's for a, it's a cosmetic for cosmetics, but it's very very soft. And I use this for brushing the dust out of the crown of the orchid, which I'll show you soon. Getting a nice good watering here. I'm gonna soak that medium. You can see that this one is uh, mounted up with quite a bit of sphagnum moss around the roots at the top of the plant, and that is um, because once again I want to keep those roots protected from drying out completely it just helps helps quite a bit it helps those roots from going black that are on the surface yeah once again here and there I have these um, since pesky fungus nets that I'm going to deal with pretty soon. Those sticky traps. All it takes is one plant. I put all the sticky traps around it and trap them all, so I can keep it keep their numbers down to a bare minimum. Okay. I need to do it a little bit more. I can see some dry spots there. I'm pretty thorough about <clears throat> doing these things. It's just all up to you, really, what you do. But this is the absolute best way to do it. And, uh, if you're really busy, you should buy a big bin and fill it up and put a green tea bag into the into the water and a little white vinegar. And then you should uh, add some diluted fertilizer or liquid fertilizer. And you just soak your plants in there. Let them soak it up from the bottom. I actually do that now and then. Okay, there we go. Next. I'm probably going to take longer than I usually do because I'm talking and doing this at the same time. Good to go for the next two weeks or three. I'm just going to pop it on the side here 
so that it just uh, drains off a bit. Next thing to do is to give those leaves a wipe. Get the dust off. Some of you may think, oh my gosh, what a nuisance. I am in no hurry. I have time. I make time. And I don't mind doing this at all. Hmm, that's quite nice. Over here there's like an it's kind of branching off. It's not a cakey, I don't think. It's just coming out of the side of the stem there. It's kind of branching. Getting bushy. If you're worried about breaking your leaves, you just make sure that the hand underneath is supporting the leaf that you wipe over the top two more to go the aerial root there every little bit makes a difference, a big difference to the health of the plant. And then we have this brush here, because the dust likes to settle right in there. I get my brush and brush it right in there, and that helps get the dust out of the crown. It's all done. Look at that. Close to perfect. Very nice. Okay, stay tuned for the next watering. Okay, this one is uh, a rescue orchid from the store. Paid $5 for it. It has huge white blooms on it. With a with a yellow center, it's growing really well now, very healthy. Just talking about those blackened roots on the top, you can see there. This is caused by drying because it's very very dry here in the winter, and the moss just helps to protect these roots. Well, I try to put as much as I could around there, but they're not mushy or anything. So that's fine. Um, it's just an aesthetics thing. If it was growing outdoors, it, it, would, it would have much better looking roots. All the roots, however, that are starting to grow or on the medium are all very healthy. Okay, I'm going to give it a good soak first. Sorry about the camera angle, but um, this is all I can do. I don't have anyone helping me, not today anyway. But you can get the idea that I am watering quite a lot. Once again, to get the, all the medium nice and moist because orchids need it they need some time they need some time to soak up their water and i don't want to burn the roots with the fertilizer this part here is one that i actually um, drilled myself it is perspex it's a perspex pot it's going to last forever and ever and 
I didn't drill, I actually used a, um, a soldering iron to do that. Okay, so kind of run out of I run out of watering. I run out of my, my solution here, all my good stuff. So I'm going to put a little bit of white vinegar in there. I don't measure it. I don't measure it anymore. I've taken pH readings that many times. I know that when I put a bit in there like that, it's going to bring it down. I'm going to have a half cap of a half of this, which is the reading for that would be. So the big side is a, is a gram. So this is a third of a gram. Better safe than sorry. If you put too much, you're going to do some damage. So you better to go on the on the safe side with your watering, with your water. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put mine back to, um, uh, back to filter, because there's a filter inside this tap. It's charcoal filter. I'll keep the water as clean as I can, which is a good thing. If I can do it, I'll do it. If you're not able to, the white vinegar will take care of that for you. I've also been using um, fish tank pH uh, adjustment fluid. I uh, can't remember what it is. Uh, you add it to the water to get rid of the fluoride and the chlorine. If you know what that is, you put a tiny bit, very tiny. The plants have been liking it. I noticed it with my Hoya Bella. And they've been using, putting like a one or two drops in two liters of water and then adding a bit of vinegar. Uh, they they kind of like it. It's giving them a boost. I'm going to do an update video on that because the flower buds are exploding all over them. <clears throat> it's taken me years to get my Hoyas to to grow right, especially Hoya Bella. Maybe easier for a lot of you guys, but I had a struggle with them. And that is done. I just love the new growth on it. Very, very pleased about it. And of course, next thing I'm going to do is give those leaves a wipe because I want to keep it growing and healthy. And I've been doing it for so many for the past few years. I'm just used to it. I just do it automatic now without thinking. kind of like parental care, isn't it? Or in the case when your kids are growing up, getting older and they're doing everything for themselves, you still have this parental instinct that you can follow through to many other aspects of your life. Here's the brush. Take the brush now, brush the crown. Look at that. Looks as if it was growing outside on a tree. What do you think? Such a healthy, beautiful orchid. And of course the flower spikes. Or one in this case.
I'm hoping for a beautiful display. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next watering. Welcome back. What's this? This is for a phalaenopsis. Exquisite. This is in cash pot just to hold it up. It's got a nice root system. Very nice. This is going to get its watering today because it's been a couple of weeks. It's got many, it's got another flower spike coming up at the back there. It's a very nice one. Have a good soak. What's its name anyway? The name in here. Show me your name. It says Leaf Bellina. Leaf Bellina. Does that ring any bells? It just reminds me, I've got to repot my Selogeny orchid today. If any of you don't know what a Selogeny is, I'll put the name up on the screen. If I can remember, Selogeny. It's a very hardy, tough orchid. It's got beautiful green bulbs. Beautiful, beautiful linear leaves and the flowers. Well, this particular one is Chinensis, has pendulant flower blooms, many, many inflorescences. They pop out like stalks and they dangle with all these little tiny white flowers, and it's very fragrant. I'm going to be repotting that today. I keep it outdoors during this. Spring, summer, all the way into autumn. I've got to bring it in to avoid the freeze that we have here. We have freezes. There are a number of uh, Japanese orchids that can handle the freeze. And one of them is uh, Vanda, believe it or not. Falcata. It's a very small Vanda, very small. They grow it in little tiny pots mounded up with moss balls. That one has beautiful little white or purple flowers, sometimes even green. And it is growing in the neighborhood, all very close to here, outdoors all year. Even when it snows and even when we get frost and minus temperatures it can handle it because it's native to Japan and also we have a native Groengi, Groengii Cymbidium that grows in very well draining soil usually underneath trees in the forest it's one of its favorite places which handles the freeze easily And um, if you check out my Instagram, you will see pictures of it in flower, which I'll be growing under the, underneath the bushes in the garden. And um, it even sets seed. The two big seed pods that I opened up that I didn't even know about. And there's also many other um, there's a native Phalaenopsis too, native to Japan in the southern tropical islands of Japan. Sideria, I think it's called. Japonica or something like that. And there's Bulbophyllums, native to Japan, offshore islands, even on the main mainland. Some of them can be very tiny. Some of them are, can have quite large flowers. 
Then we have a dendrobium native to Japan, monophyllum, which if you grow on trees, the trees is kind of like a micro climate. So when it gets freezing, you get the freezing cold and the snow, your monophyllum, dendrobium monophyllum will get through it easily. It is very, very like bamboo-like canes on it. They grow in masses. And when it flowers, it's incredible. If you have a big clump of it, it's a huge floral display of white, beautiful dendrobium flowers. I'm going to do that myself. I'm going to pick up some dendrobium monoliform. I'm going to do that because I think it looks great. Anyway, stay tuned for the next watering. Welcome back. This one here is beautiful flowers on it, so it's got no name. The name label is somewhere. I need to put it back in. It has one flower spike, but this uh, flower spike is dividing right here into a second. It's very healthy, very healthy root system. This is actually a pencil case holder from the store. And I decided to put it into here. It's got beautiful new roots growing. I've had it for a number of years. One of the things that has kept this very healthy is not only the watering, but the pot I put it in. It's just got all this aeration. The more aeration you can give it in the pot, the better. As many holes as you can. If I was living somewhere like in Florida, and I know Florida doesn't always have perfect weather, but if I was living there, I would just mount them, mount them onto trees. I would have a contingency plan, a follow-up plan of what to do if you get a cold snap, definitely. I always think about that when you grow your orchids is outside. If you can, is how are you going to deal with a cold snap? You can't rip them off the trees, bring them inside. I have many, many plans to look after my plants and I'm going to make a program about that to help all of you get some ideas and it'll be about cacti, hawathias, of course orchids some of them will be ideas that are nothing new, they're just basic super basic things and other ones are just introducing things that you can find on the market that maybe you just haven't seen before, maybe you're interested. Here we are, got a good soak and in goes the the good water. It has the fertilizer. It's more on the phosphorus side more than anything. That is done. And then we just have to enjoy watching it grow. And one last thing. Give those leaves a wipe. There we go. I'll start up here. Wipe this one. Many of you actually wipe leaves like I'm doing, or is it just a nuisance? Ever since I started doing this, I just noticed a difference with the growth. Especially with um, Hoyas. Started to do with Hoyas too.
You can take them into the shower, shower them down. In my case, um, the plants are indoors and dust sticks. So after the shower, you give them, <clears throat> you got to have a good check, make sure you get all that dust off. Wiping is like 100%, you get every bit of dust off. And, not to forget, let's wipe the crown here. Can you imagine how happy this orchid is? We can only imagine they're going by the growth here. We can see that it's doing very well. Um, every new leaf that grows on your orchid should be slightly bigger than the last. That is caused by the repotting. There's some shock, so you have to expect your orchid to put out a few smaller leaves than it did the first time until it gets thoroughly rooted into the pot and nice and snug, happy, and then it starts to take up nutrients better. The new leaves will start to get bigger after, after time. It's just a patience thing. Anyway, stay tuned for more. Welcome back. This is the next orchid, which has a really impressive flower spike. So let me show you that. See here? It's got one flower spike with all these spikes coming off the main one. One, two, three, four. So this is going to be a magnificent display. I got this plant going on four years ago. You can see the blackened roots down there. That um, I'm going to put some sphagnum moss and put it around the top here. I'm going to do that right now. Um, this is how they should look, of course. But this is just... It could also be the bark is um, tanning the roots. Kind of like if you get a tea bag and you squeeze it and you get the the um, you know all the minerals and stuff come out and it um, stains. That's the word I want to say. It stained the roots, so they're not unhealthy. Uh, this one got repotted. It's been taking some time to get itself back together and growing well. Its flowers are beautiful harlequin. Very beautiful. If I have a picture, I'll put it up on the screen here. Anyway, I better go and get the sphagnum moss first. Okay, I'm just going to start watering it first. I got some sphagnum moss soaking in um, on, in the sink here. I wet it. Um, once again, why am I going to put sphagnum moss? Just to keep those roots on the surface moist. So that they're nice and healthy and silvery. Although actually these aerial roots up here are silvery, so what am I talking about? I mean, I want to keep the tannings and the staining away from the roots, from the bark. That's what I wanted to say by putting the moss there. I don't want to get confused and look at my orchid and think it's sick. So I'll do anything to make sure that it's well and healthy. You might be looking at the time here, you probably think, oh my gosh, he's taking a long time to water his plants, but I'm doing a video and I'm talking. I wouldn't normally take this amount of time because I am multitasking and multitasking is, is there's no such thing as multitasking because here's the evidence multitasking slows you down it's always easy to do one thing at a time 
because this is a video and I'm sharing, I don't mind spending the extra time today because it's for a good purpose. Anyway, that is well soaked. Oh, the, of course, this um, forgot to mention this one's not growing in bark, actually, it's growing in a um, it's growing in, in um, what do they call it? The coconut fiber. Coconut fiber, and it uh, mixed them with um, pumice. And there you are. Made a bit of a mistake there. Sorry about that. Thought it was in bark. I'm just trying out this and seeing how well the Phalaenopsis grow in it. Here we are. And the next thing I was going to do was to put that moss in. So here we go. Here it is. All starting to make sense now, isn't it? Why do people put the moss on the top? <sighs> it's amazing how you miss things. You get so busy and you continue doing what you do and then you realize that you forgot to do something that's so obvious. As I'm doing right now, I don't know why I didn't put moss around the top of it. Why did I take this long? It's just getting busy and sidetracked and stuff like that. Okay, I feel much better that I got this moss here. Orchid should be much happier, very much better. some good signs that your watering schedule and growing medium is good. <clears throat> so if you see little things popping up, moss would be one. You might notice some moss growing. That means that your water that you're using is very, very healthy and close to natural rainwater. It's a good sign. I have an orchid that was growing moss in it. And boy, did it have a great root system. <clears throat> I have one that has a, a, um, a fern spore that started to grow. You can see the fern leaves inside it, which is pretty neat. In actual fact, that it's this one. What do you know? Let's have a zoom in. I want to show you this. <clears throat> Could be a nuisance, I don't know yet, but it's got a fern growing in there. Can you see it? It's right in there. It's hard for me to know if I'm getting the right focus here. There we go. Let's try one more time. You can see in there there's a fern growing. And those little things racing around, they are springtails. Nothing to be alarmed about. Springtails are perfectly fine. They only eat up dead plant tissue and algae and fungi that's what they eat so they're actually beneficial bugs so you can see that fern growing in there 
That means that this growing medium is quite healthy. And this Phalaenopsis is going to have a good growth spurt this year. See those new, new green roots in there. Did have some roots that rotted. Um, if it had have affected the health of the orchid, I would have given it a good clean out with hydrogen peroxide. And here's the moss on the top. There's a little bit of husk there that I will remove later just to keep the orchid nice, clean, tidy and healthy. Anyway, I got one more to go and stay tuned for that. Here's my one that I nearly killed. And you can see here that it had its last two leaves and I managed to save it starting to grow a new leaf, although this is very growing very slowly because the first thing the orchid tries to do is establish a whole new root system so this leaf is going to be um, substituted for root growth because it has two the orchid can make do and it doesn't need to grow anymore once the root system is very well established, this leaf will start growing, however, it won't be quite as big as these. It will take time before it rejuvenates and gets back to complete good health. But the biggest surprise is right here. I'm not able to focus. Can we focus? Maybe if I tap on the screen here, give it a tap. Does that work? <clears throat> I have to change the focus here. Yeah, I'm going to try this way. You can see that there's a flower spike. which means that it must be pretty healthy. Um, I will watch the leaves. If the leaves start getting sick, I will have to cut it off. But I want to leave it on. I figure it's pretty healthy now. It's been in here for a year and a half. So this root system in here must be pretty good. I mean, we can see this root popping out here, look, can you see that one? So then there will be roots everywhere in there. It's one of my favorite orchids. Um, how did I kill it? Well, nearly kill it. Um, that was overwatering. I didn't let it dry out. I stuck to my schedule. My schedule was I water every every two weeks. Um, it hadn't dried out thoroughly and I went ahead and I just stuck to my schedule which meant that it was just far too moist, far too wet in the medium and the medium was all moss packed together really tightly and everybody knows now <clears throat> they do that because of transportation they need to keep the orchid in good condition and sellers know that buyers and, and all of that, they haven't got time to water the orchids. They can only do one thing, and that's to buy in bulk, put them in the store and sell them. And it's not because they want to kill the orchids, it's just they want to keep them moist for as long as possible through transportation and surviving in the store. But it's up to us to get them home and take them out of the, that really hard, compacted moss to put them into nice, fresh mix. But, you know, it would be nice if they wrote that on the label. We're sorry for this in inconvenience, but 
to ensure the orchid stays nice and moist through transportation and to survive in the store and to keep moist we have packed the moss very very tightly we, su we suggest after flowering that you repot your orchid or it will rot in the future you know I don't know something like that that would help a lot because you know I don't like buying plants and throwing them out after they've flowered I like to keep them it doesn't make sense to throw them away we should be looking after them but you know over here in Japan they're used a lot for displays and everybody didn't know how to look after them so that they flower and then they slowly die in this in the shop or store or dentist at the dentist's or something in a window and that's it that's their life it's probably good for the seller too they grow more and sell more it's just unfortunate but that's how it goes uh, not for everybody there's a lot of people like you and me we want to look after them and grow them and <clears throat> enjoy them that way anyway <clears throat> I am going to give this a watering now. I'm sorry if um, the focus hasn't been the best all the time. Gonna give it a good soak. Actually, a lot of people wouldn't go through with it flowering. They would cut it off. But I'm going to let it go ahead. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure after a year and a half of being in here, it has a good root system, so I will let it flower. I keep my eye on that new leaf coming out of the center, because that one's got a... It's got to start growing. It's got to replace these two leaves that could, you know, potentially die and fall off. It could. But I'm hoping this one leaf coming out of the center is going to continue growing as the flower spike keeps growing. I hope we get another leaf. Anyway. I'm not sure it gets plenty plenty of this water. Would you guys do in my case what would you do if you had to save this orchid would you let it flower or would you not risk it would you cut it off to promote possible faster leaf growth it's always a hard decision. I like to think the orchid can do both. It is, after all, trying to survive, not kill itself. And in any in any case, why would it produce a flower spike if it was unhealthy? It wouldn't make sense. But it could. Maybe it's trying to do it as a last resort to survival. <clears throat> before it um, finally dies or it could be that it has a healthy root system by now and it can afford to do it and if I look at these leaves left 
they're quite healthy. I think they'll be dying any time soon. I think they have a, quite a lot, a lot of life left in them. But I am going to keep my eye on um, this new leaf growing here. It's been small for I don't know how long. Months and months it's been small. And I'm going to keep an eye on the flower spike. If I notice any change in the health of the orchid, of course I'll have to cut it off. But I hope I don't have to. I really want to see the flowers again. Even if it's for a short time. When I was saving the orchid at that time, when it had the root rod, I did, I, straight away I cut the flower spike off to save my plant. And here, I'm just trying to get the water out of the crown. It went in there a little bit. Another point is um, when you are growing your orchids, if you can, keep the air flowing. Don't put it in a in an absolute still room or greenhouse where there's no air movement or no air exchange. You're going to expect fungus and all sorts of diseases to start popping up <clears throat> all over the leaves and in the roots. <clears throat> no matter how cold it gets in your greenhouse, turn on the oscillating fan. Keep it going. It should be going gently, not blowing like a hurricane, but um, going gently. So you have this gentle breeze and it's just keeping the air moving. <clears throat> That's what causes a lot of fungus attacks and poor health in the orchids. So once again, no matter how cold it gets, turn it on, keep that air moving. It's important. <clears throat> and anyway we are going to finish off here and uh, thanks for joining me as I water my orchids or well, phalaenopsis orchids and I hope uh, this helped you out and you enjoyed watching and if you did give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to have more programs coming out and I hope that I can have more visits to greenhouses in the near future whether it's cacti greenhouses or orchid growers and garden centers in Japan and I look forward to seeing you next time happy growing and don't forget that looking after your plants is not a chore Part of your self care. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.